Kathy Nichols, and I'm a lifelong artist, painter, and teacher. I help students of all ages tap into their creativity with watercolor. Watercolor is a great way to express yourself, and it's easy to get started and fun to do. My watercolor lessons are designed for beginners of all ages. No theory and not too technical. Just follow along with me. I hope you join me to learn how to paint with watercolor. I can't wait to see your paintings. One of the things I like about summer is to go on a picnic. It's a great way to have fun with family and friends. So let's have some fun and paint one. Let's get started. Today, I used a photograph for a model, and here it is. Well, we start with spraying the pans of paint here. Put some water in your palette. Okay, let's start with our liner brush and load it with yellow ochre and sketch out with the yellow ochre the basket. Now the basket is going to be sitting here on the right lower corner and it's like in a V so let's start it with that and then come around on both sides and then make the bottom here And then it comes up a little bit more. Now, right here is the handle of the basket. And it goes up and it comes back down. And you can slowly widen it to the width you need. And then there's a line that comes through like that. And then we're going, let's make the handle on the basket on the tip here darker. Like that to start with. Okay, next let's sketch in with a watercolor a bottle of wine. And to do that, you will want to load your brush with crimson, a light color, just mostly half and half of water and paint. 
and it's going to lean against the basket. So the neck of the bas the neck of the wine is right starts right up here. Like that. And then it comes down. Now I'm not doing the bottle completely because next to it is a glass of wine. So let's start to make that shape and it starts about right here. And you make a circle and then a half circle. Have it come down the stem. Like that. Then you can come and finish that bottle of wine here. Like that. That line is a little blurred and I'm just going to take my paper towel here and dry it a little bit. Okay, now on this wine bottle, there's a top, so I'm going to make a little circle here, and then spread some of that paint. Now there's a label on this wine. And so we want the center of the bottle white, about right here. So right here. About like that. And down below, add a little more of that crimson color. Okay. Now, we'll work on the glass of wine a little bit later. So, clean your brush. And next to this glass of wine is some green grapes. So let's make some green grapes and sketch those in. Now to get the color for those green grapes, let's take some lemon yellow. Put some on your palette here and add some sap green. And that's a little bit too much green. Okay. And just start making some circles next to the wine glass. Like so. All right, so below, below these grapes is going to be a cloth, and this cloth is going to be checkered, the color red and white. So let's use our crimson to sketch some of that in. And just kind of make some 
lines of checkers and then the edge of the cloth you want to put that in now I saw that the crimson ran into my grapes and that's just the easy fix I'm just going to dab that and go back in and put some more color of the green a little bit later. So let's continue to make some checkers and then the edge of the cloth that we see. Kind of folds up and crumpled a little bit there. Like that. Okay, I want to give it a good dry before I start to go further. Okay, let's turn our attention on the background. Now, in the background, there is a hillside and then some trees and some skies up here. A little bit of sky. So let's work on the sky first. By using your flat brush, let's wet part of the paper. You want to start at the top and go maybe two inches down. And then switch to our mop brush. I'm going to Let's clean your palette here. There's some, I have some yellow here and I don't want it to mix with the blue. So just taking a moment to clean my palette there. Okay, so for the sky, let's use some intense blue. And start at the top and it's pretty heavy so you don't need to reload your paintbrush and if it starts to pull which I kind of see that happening there you can re-wet your brush and with some water and spread that paint more Kind of work the paint into the paper. Sometimes watercolor, the paper is unpredictable on how it absorbs the paint. Okay, that looks better. It's more even. Okay. Now, now we're going to make some trees here and sometimes you want the colors to bleed and 
sometimes you have happy accidents when that happens. So let's just take some sap green here and start forming some little trees. And if it mixes into the blue sky, that's okay. I'm not too concerned. Need to reload my brush. Got a little speck there. Now, that's good for now. Now I want to pause here and take some of my paper towel and the, the sky is still wet and form a few little clouds. And I can do that by just simply dabbing and you can kind of fold your paper towel in the shape that you want this some faint little clouds on a summer day now if it's too dry it won't lift the paint up, so you might have to re-wet it to get it going. Okay, so now I see this is pulling a little bit, and I'm going to dab the trees here a little bit. Just a little bit like that to kind of make it faint. Now... I do have a hard line here, and I'm going to work on making them not so hard. So to do that, you can take your round with pointed tip brush, wet it, and here I will add some more of the intense blue. And that was a little bit strong. So I'm going to put some water and dilute it a little bit. Just add a little bit of that, more of that blue underneath that cloud. Spread it up here a little bit. A little more up here. And sometimes with watercolor, you have to rework it several times in to get the effect that you want. And it's sometimes hard to explain how to do it, but once you get it, it's, it's very magical to me. Okay, that looks better. Okay. Just want some faint distance of clouds and sky. And it's hard to stop fiddling with it. Okay. Now, so here is the heel side. It's coming like that. So, Let's take some of the mixture of the sap green and lemon yellow and paint some grass. And this is the first coat that we're going to make. 
Again, you want to create those layers. And I have, I'm doing that with the paper dry because if I was to wet it, it might mess up some of the, um, the basket and the bottle of wine here. And I want to be careful when I'm putting it on. And so this way I have more control over what's going to happen. Come around. Excuse me. Come around and put some in your, on by the basket. Down below here. And then keep bringing some of that color down here. Load your brush as needed. And sometimes the color is too heavy in one spot and you can just add water to spread it. Now here I noticed when I sketched in the wine glass it's a little bit short and squatty so I'm going to leave a little white space because I'm going to bring that up a little bit and continue around the wine bottle need a little more paint here Load your brush as needed. Okay. So now let's work on this wine bottle. Switch brushes to your liner brush. Check if it's clean. Yep. And load your brush with some of that crimson. But let's give it a good dry first. I don't want the paint to run and so drying it is a good thing. Okay, so let's bring that up just a tad. Just seems like it's a little squatty. Okay, and make that circle. And here's where some of the wine is in the glass. Some of it kind of reflection comes down on the stem there. Okay. 
All right. So let's go to the basket now. And with this, let's give it a light coat of the ochre. Straight, just ochre with your liner brush. And spread some of that color. Too dark, so I'm just adding some water to my brush. I'm going to spread that paint. Okay, so I did the top of that basket. Now, this basket has a liner, and we're going to make that blue. So the liner comes about here, but I'm going to do the bottom of the basket, still taking your liner brush with some of the ochre and leaving a white spot there to put the liner. Okay, and there's a little spot up here that I need to fill in. Okay, let's stop and give it a good try. Okay, let's take our liner brush, clean it, and now let's do that blue liner. So to do the blue liner, we'll use some ultramarine blue. So let's do the liner in the basket. To do that, we'll use the ultramarine blue. And that liner is right below the basket. Then it comes up and around here, and down and around to the other side. And right here, there's a bow in this basket. So I'll take some of that ultramarine blue and make a bow like it's tied there. Then go ahead and clean your brush. And let's create some texture in this basket. Using some load your liner brush with yellow ochre and some burnt umber to make an shade darker and make some crisscross some checkers so 
Well, let's put some of the basket weave, which you can create that by doing the check, kind of the check scratches design. So a little bit up here, come down here. Now I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to do every little line in that basket. Um, cause, because what I like about watercolor is you can make the impression or represent something. It doesn't have to be like a photograph. Let's come down here and do some more. Okay, and then with the handle, we need to make some depth and texture to it. So put some curved lines here. Like that. Now, this bottle of wine is leaning on this, uh, this basket here and causing a shadow. So I want to create a shadow. So it will need to be darker than what this is here. So let's create that color by mixing burnt Sienna and burnt umber. And just putting a spot a little below there, like that. Okay, now below this basket, there is some of this darkness in the weaves. So let's take some of that mixture that we have still using our liner brush with burnt umber and burnt sienna. And just Every couple spaces, put some of that darkness. Kind of like that, and it will make the bottom of it pop out. And there's a little more shadows there. Like that. Okay, let's leave that for now and work on the wine bottle. And it's light and we wanna use a darker color. So we will need to use the crimson and add some of the burnt umber to get a darker color there. Now, I don't want to fill in the whole thing. I want to leave some of that light color that I have here. Now on the top, there's some gold foil 
but we'll fill that in a little bit later. Let's continue with this color. Go all the way down here. Like that. Now let's carry some of that color to the glass of wine here. And you, with the wine, you might want it to be more of the the red color and not so dark. And if it is, you can just add water to your brush and dilute it. Like that. Okay, now let's go on to the grapes. Now, they're a little bit light here, so go ahead and clean your brush. And let's reload it with some of the sap green and lemon yellow. I have some here on my palette enough for what I need. Okay. That's all I wanted to do was to make the spot where I dabbed not so light. So let's take our liner. When you look at grapes, there's branches or a stem. And so we will sketch those in by using our burnt umber. It's kind of a dark brown. And just put some spots like there's the stem for these circles. So if I notice this is spreading, so I need to dab that and dry that kind of messed up there, but I'm going to show you how I'm going to fix it. But first I need to dry it. Okay, I'm cleaning my brush and I just I just want that green to be a little brighter. So I need to mix some more paint and just gonna make it a little bit on the greener side. like that. Then stop and dry it because I want to put the stems on and if it's wet it will spread the paint and I don't I don't want the paint to spread.
Okay. Let's take our liner brush. Load it with a burnt umber. And then put some more of the stems in the grapes like that. Okay. Now let's turn our attention to the cloth here. Now it's a little bit more too pink, so to kind of change that and add more contrast, let's mix crimson and our cadmium red. And that's going to give it not such a pinkish color. And then add some down here. Go along. Like that. Okay. Now I added quite a bit here because the bottle of wine is casting a little bit of a shadow there. We need some little bit below the bottle. Like that. Okay. Let's stop and work on the background. Now, this is grass and we need to make some of the blades of grass. So let's take our round with pointed tip brush and use the mixture of the lemon yellow and the sap green and use a little more of the sap green maybe a shade up and I'm going to put some so we have our base color here some blades of grass just kind of sporadically go all over the place here let's start at the bottom by the basket and start putting some and if you go up on the basket that's okay too you want to go up a little bit on the basket this, this grass is not perfectly lawn mowed down to the cut. It's a little bit long. So we want to see those blades of grass. Then continue down on the bottom here, following up, then go up further, then up by the trees here. A little bit too dark. But I'm going to spread that color out. Now 
Okay. And let's create some over here on the other side. So we need to add, let's add some of this green on the other side here. Now, I notice this is a little bit too dark, so I'm just adding water to my brush and picking up some of that paint. I need to add some right here below the, in between the handle here of the basket. You want to always step back and stop for a minute and kind of look at your painting to think about what you need to do. Um, I want to work on this glass of wine and add a little more contrast by adding another layer of dark about as dark as where it is here on the wine bottle. Now the background, see that's a little dark here. I like it being faint and not too much detail so it's more of a blur. So I'm not going to add any more detail to the background. I like the blurry look of it. So let's switch our brushes to our liner and work on this wine glass and a little bit of adding another shade of green to our grass. But first, let's work on the wine glass by taking your liner brush, adding crimson with a touch of the burnt umber and add a touch of the ultramarine blue to give it a little bit more of a depth and richness of color. And add a few lines of Darkness, leaving some of the lighter color there, like that. Let's add some of that to the bottom of the wine bottle here and carry that up. And then on the top of that wine bottle, there's a gold foil. So let's clean your brush, you can check if it's clean, and add a touch of yellow ochre. Just like that. Now, on this label there's a little bit of a shadow and um let's with your liner brush take a just a touch of the burnt umber and just kind of add a little shadow like there might be some writing or something, but it doesn't doesn't need to be defined. Just a little bit. Like that. Now let's add our 
next layer of dark green. So we'll just add another layer to the mixture of lemon yellow, sap green, and a touch of burnt umber. So let's go ahead and do that. And I have a little bit of the mixture here. Oh, that's still a little too brown. I'm going to add some of that green back. Okay, I think that's going to be right. Contestant on your paper tail. Yep. That's about another shade up from what I have on the painting. And add a few of those blades down below, especially by the basket. Now, I want to add some of that color in the background. I don't, you don't want to add too much because I don't want it to overpower just a few. And I did add some water to that. To lighten it. <coughs> Excuse me. And then add a few more, some more of that color to the other side. Okay, and then every so often when you are doing it, you want to <clears throat> you want to stop and look at your painting. And I'm going to stop now. It's easy to kind of keep doing this, and then you step back and you go, "Oh, maybe I did too much," and then reevaluate what you need to do. Now I see right here, it's, I want to spread that and thin that color a little bit here. And I can just do that by adding a touch of water. Then stop and look at the overall picture. And I see that I do want to make the trees in the background stand out a little bit more here. So I will So I want to make the treetops here stand out more. 
So let's do that with our liner brush and use some of the mixture we have here with the sap green, lemon yellow, and a touch of the burnt umber. And you will want to leave some of the color that's already there and just make the treetop more defined. And then some more on the other side here. Some of the blue sky is peeking out. Just like that. Now here, it's a little bit wet and it's a little bit, looks globby to me and I wanna not do that. So I'm gonna add some water to my brush and spread that paint a little more. Doesn't that looks better? A little more here. I don't want the water to pool. I just kind of let's give it a good dry and then look at it again and reevaluate whether we want to add more paint or not. Okay, now that it is dry, I see that there's kind of a light, light color and then a medium color, and we need to add a little darkness for more contrast. So let's mix some more paint here with our lemon yellow, sap green, burnt umber, and let's add a touch of ultramarine blue just to give it kind of a different tone it adds a little richness to it and put a few spots and some on this tree Now this seems a little too blobby to me on this side and I want to just wet my brush and spread the paint a little bit so it's more blurred, kind of a blurred effect.
You just need to kind of tap it to kind of get it so it's not so strong like that. And then stand back and look at it. So let's go on this other side and work on this tree. Okay, let's give it a final dry. Sit back, look at it. I'm very happy with this and I hope that you're happy with yours and that you enjoyed this lesson. Thanks for joining me today. I really enjoyed it and hope you have a great day. Join me next time when we'll have some more creative fun. To give watercolor a try, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, and take a lesson or two. Take care, be safe, and see you soon.